and gentlemen, the pleb is back in today's report. I have leaked information on today's show that proves that the liberals and NDP are planning behind closed doors to merge in order to beat Pierre Polyev. As well tonight, Justin Trudeau's latest interview goes internationally viral as it is now being mentioned on British TV. As well tonight, Kean Bexty goes on radio to talk about his interview with Justin Trudeau this week, and the radio host tries to make him look bad, and Kean destroys this host so bad that they didn't air the interview, but don't worry. I have all the tapes. Also tonight, Jordan Peterson was on the Joe Rogan podcast and clips are going viral all over social media. So we're gonna cover it. You won't wanna miss tonight's story, stick around. Before we start tonight's report, are you absolutely fed up of the bias of the liberal media? If the answer is yes, smash the subscribe button because I'm going to show you the news the mainstream media won't. Oh yes, and before I forget, I started a new Discord server for this channel, so if you guys want to join, send me clips, share memes with me, you can join our new Discord for the Pleb Reporter in the description below. Welcome to your Friday report. What better way to kick off your weekend than with your buddy, the pleb? Tonight's first story will kick off with the reason you clicked on this video. I have damning information, damning evidence that what happened in France is coming to Canada. Now, on the 8th of July, I tried to warn all of you that what happened in France is coming to Canada. The left is going to try to merge. They're going to try to circumvent democracy. They're going to do what the French did. And guess what? It only took 18 days for them to get the plans in motion. Now, yesterday, my friend Karim Assad went to a liberal fundraiser in Whitby, Ontario, and was given access to some really crazy information. Now, outside of this liberal party fundraiser, there were protesters, the usual F. Trudeau protests, but somehow Karima was able to get in to get access to this vital information. Here's what it looked like outside the fundraiser. So as you can see here, they're having hamburgers and look in the, <laughs> look in the background along the beach is all the F. Trudeau protesters. Look at that. Tyrant patrol, they call themselves. Wherever there's a liberal event in Ontario, these people are going to it. But luckily, our friend Karim Assad was able to get inside, and you won't believe what she found out. So as this protest was going on outside the liberal fundraiser, our friend Karima was able to get in and man, the information she got is crazy. Not surprising, but crazy. Look at this here. What was the, what be sort of what was the best part? The fried pickles are pretty good. What sort of politics did they discuss? They actually talked about the possibility of Liberal and NDP working together in advance of an election to only run one candidate <gasps> in any given riding to avoid vote splitting. Yeah, um, so they, they are they are in a party anyway. They always have been. So they were inspired, I think, by France. This is this is the first step, right? To them becoming the one party, I guess. I just, uh, Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? NDP working together in a. Liberal and NDP working together in advance of an election to only run one candidate in any given riding to avoid vote splitting. Yeah, um, so they, they are they are in a party anyway. They always have been. So. They this were inspired, how, I think, by France. This is, this is the first step, right? To them um, becoming the one party. I wow. What did I tell you guys about the left doing literally anything they can to win? anything to hold on to power. They're literally willing to screw democracy over just to keep power. This is who they are. And if we look at the latest polling data here in Canada from Abacus, if the NDP and the Liberals merge officially, 
they would be 1% ahead of the conservatives. So I know we have a really big lead right now, but let's not get comfortable, all right? This super coalition could defeat us. If we dip a little bit in the polls, we're screwed. So don't pretend like the next election's already in the bag. We need to continue pushing and pushing hard. Nothing is guaranteed. In our next story of the night, we're going to talk about Justin Trudeau. His latest interview on the beach in Tofino with Kean Bexty is now getting international attention, as you can see on this clip from Talk TV in Britain. And before you guys give me crap again about this host, she's an Australian, yes, but she's working on British TV. I know the difference in the accents. I'll just ask you I'm super done. quickly. Your I'm minister done. said you're going on sir. vacation. No, don't put your hands sir. on me. I'm don't done. put your hands on me. Even on the beach, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau can't hide from grilling journalists wanting answers. Posted by independent journalist Keen Bex from the Counter Signal, the reporter confronted the PM in the trailer for his upcoming interview. When Trudeau seemingly allowed the journalist to join him for a walk and talk, Canada's controversial left-leaning leader was grilled on various topics, including his vacation days. Hmm. And as you know, you know, I work more days a week than the vast majority of Canadians. You've You're actually here. taken hundreds of vacation days hold last hold year. Hold okay, hold, 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 Sorry. You can do the math. Glenn McGregor did the math last year, pointed out how many days I work as Prime Minister, and it's equivalent of working every single day of the week <laughs> and Saturday. I'm not taking any day off, not any, any uh, uh, bank holidays, not two weeks of vacation, nothing. Welcome to Mad World, our <laughs> weekly Culture Wars wrap up. So this interview with Trudeau on the beach is making international headlines, but it's also causing quite a ruckus here in Canada with the left pushing back on Kean Bexty. Some people on the conservatives pushing back on Kean as well, but Kean went on radio this week to defend his interview with host Stephanie Smith and destroyed her so bad that she refused to air the interview. But thankfully, we got the tapes. I just asked you a question. You're welcome to answer it. Okay, Sandra, Sandra Trudeau, please. It's Stephanie, really actually. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I should. Okay. No idea who you are. Trudeau plays Victor really well. He has people like you to defend him ad nauseum. You will continue. As to I said, I, I would defend any no, prime minister. Finish answering your no, question. because you're not I answering will. the question. You're not answering the question. Why is it okay to ambush a prime minister on a vacation? Okay. Any prime minister. I think that we have to look at this interview for what it was. It was an inside look at how the PM views himself. He says he works harder than the vast majority of Canadians. The single mothers of this country who work two jobs are gonna see this interview and scratch their head. The people who work in a camp in Northern Alberta, 13 days on and get one day off and don't see their child for the first three years of their lives because they're working hard to put food on their table while inflation runs out of control in this country because of Justin Trudeau's spending policies. Look- So you're not a journalist, you're out with an agenda. So your agenda, your that's not journalism. Canadian. No, you but are. Canadians aren't dying to hear your questions about him on a Tofino beach having a holiday. Sorry. I know that Glenn McGregor, a real journalist, did did some <laughs> reporting real on journalist. Justin Trudeau and his holiday time, which is respectable because it's done by a journalist who is looking at records, you know, not ambushing. But this is an agenda that you were at to to humiliate the prime minister on his holiday. I'm wondering... Right. In the exactly. name of getting answers journalism in this country, if this is the kind of journalism that you practice. No, but you're doing that. If you're doing allegedly what you're what you allege other journalists are doing. So you're just doing the same thing. Questions of the people and going to politicians and asking them tough questions. You're the tough question. How do you, how do you feel about your polling numbers? He can be asked that any old day. Except for he, we have to sue him to get access to parliamentary press gallery debates. We well, why aren't you got now? Let's look at why you're not getting access to the press gallery in Parliament Hill. Victim blaming. Great, great idea here. Stephanie. Why aren't you getting access yeah, to Parliament a, Hill? I'm just question. I'm just curious. I live in Calgary because I live in Calgary. To be a member of the parliamentary press gallery, you have to have a full time residence in Ottawa. I don't have that, so I can't be part of the parliamentary press gallery. So when we have an election like we did in 2021, and I wanted to go to the debate to ask questions of the leaders of every political party, we have to sue Justin Trudeau's debate commission to allow us in. 
But wait, there's more. We have two more parts to this absolute destruction of an interview. Oh my God, you're, you're not good at your job if you can't listen. I go to his place and <laughs> his press advance, Terry Guion, sees who I am. He knew the questions that we were interested in asking because it was a tough time for the prime minister. And he directed the RCMP to arrest me and pull me out if I didn't leave of my own accord. He selects the journalists that go into his press conferences because he's afraid of questions from journalists who are not on his Well, table. you're not an accredited journalist. That's the problem. What does that mean? What does really? that mean? It means, it means you, are, you adhere to a code of conduct. You're members of uh, Canadian Journalism Foundation, RTDNA. Uh, you you know are... Independent press gallery in good standing. No, no, like the RTDNA. And you're, you're not from a journalistic organization. Bottom line, right? You're insane if you think that you have to take government money to be part well, of a journalistic okay. organization. Boom. Anyway, I... My God, you're, you're not good at your job. Boom. And here is part three of the interview where Kian absolutely puts the nail in the coffin. I guess, are, are you happy with what you got? <laughs> well, I'm not happy that I did this interview with a government hack, but I can tell you <laughs> that I'm happy with the response that we've had. People are so thrilled to actually see uh, Justin Trudeau for who he and, is. And who, who pays you? What's, with your organization, who pays you? Thank you, Stephanie. I'm so glad that you asked. We don't take a dime of money uh, <laughs> from the federal government. We rely right. on Canadians to go the to clickbait the clickbait for that, the, the right wing. Right. We are basically we're, we're for everyone. We're for every Canadian. Who I'm just saying like, it's, the truth. Right. if they want to go to support the signal dot com to get a subscription so that they can see all the great work that myself and all of the journalists here. at the All the journalists are doing. They absolutely can. And we would love to have them because unlike you, we're not funded by the government. <gasps> I guess. I so that was the interview with Kian Bexty and a radio station with none other than Stephanie Smith here who in her bio says she's a news media pro. But after Kian absolutely dismantles her and embarrasses her in that interview, the radio station decided not to air it. But thankfully, we have shows like mine that are more than happy to show interviews that the mainstream media deletes because they look stupid. In our last feature story here of the night, Jordan Peterson was on Joe Rogan's podcast this week, and many clips are coming out that are going very viral, including this clip where Jordan Peterson describes the evilness that is gender ideology. It was typical for girls to undergo a fair bit of confusion when they hit puberty and that that would take the form of negative emotion. No one told her that. They just rushed her down the puberty blocking and surgical pathway. That's inexcusable. It's evil. Yeah, it is. It it's is. the worst thing. It's the worst thing I've seen professionals do, not only in my lifetime. Wow. I've studied atrocity for 40 years. I've never seen anything worse than what's happening right now. And that includes the sorts of things that were done in the camps in, in Germany. <laughs> At least the goddamn Nazis admitted what they did was wrong. They tried to hide it. We trumpeted it as a moral virtue. We're freeing the children. It's like, no, I don't think so. Mothers, I think what you're doing is sacrificing your child to the parading of your moral virtue. Oh, my son, he's so confused. He thinks I's a girl, but I still love him. That's how wonderful I am. Jesus Christ, Joel. You have no idea how dark that is. It's dark. It's unbelievably and it's dark. it's attached to an industry now. Yeah, that's for sure. Which is very sure. scary. There was an a, industry and an ideology. There was an article that was recently released where this person admitted that they said it was... Uh, the, what was the exact phrase that the way they described uh, gender transition as life-saving mm -hmm. medical yeah. care yeah. in order to get insurance for it? Wow, that's yeah, a yeah. scam. Because yeah. otherwise insurance won't pay for it. Wow. So yeah. they were willing to describe it in that way to ensure that people would profit off of it. Did you guys know that? Is wild. It, wow. It's wild. It's, it's terrifying. And it's so strange because I never would have believed that this could happen. If well, you had I mean, asked me 20 years yeah. ago if this was going to be a main concern, yeah. that people were worried about their children being roped into this ideology and convinced that they're And then sterilized self. and mutilated. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I know. I know. Terrifying. Well, it's no wonder people... See, even Michael Schellenberger, who broke the WPATH files, when we talked about the role the WPATH played in establishing their own ideology addled butchery as the standard of care for the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association. Schellenberger said that 
after he had listened to Abigail Schreier and I talk about this trans mutilation, he was so appalled that he literally couldn't believe it. He just yeah. shelved it. He said, there's no way this can be true. And I, I can understand that because the more you look into it, the worse it gets. Right. It's unbelievably bad. These surgical procedures are so brutal and so experimental that they're, they're I'm going to say it again, they're worse than what the Mengali types did in the concentration camps wow. in the 30s and 40s. Whew. And that's a pretty goddamn low bar. I think Jordan Peterson's on the money here. I think when we look back in our history books at this period of time in our civilization, there's no way that they will remember this as some kind of good thing. It's going to be one of our darkest moments as human beings, just like, you know, Auschwitz. But if I can offer you guys any kind of hope here is that we are winning. We are beating these lunatic woke leftists. Tucker Carlson has become the number one podcast in the world. Yes, the TV host that got canceled from Fox News is now the number one podcast. And for our last clip of the night here, let's laugh at AOC bragging about how cancel culture works. Watch. Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a better guy. Um, what I will say, though, is while I'm very glad that the person that was arguably responsible for the some of the largest driving some of the most uh, amounts of death threats and violent threats, not just to my office, but to plenty of people across the country, um, I also kind of feel like I'm like waiting for the cutscene at the end of a Marvel movie after all the credits have rolled. And then you see like the villain's like hand reemerge out She's to, talking to idiots. rip over like the end of a building or something. But deplatforming works and it is important. And <laughs> really, AOC. Deplatforming works <laughs> and it is important. And um, there you go. Good things can happen. AOC is dumber than a bag of rocks, and her base is just as dumb as her. Look at her making Marvel movie references and her trying to justify cancel culture. This woman is a wacko, but thankfully we are winning against these wackos. This progressive woke mindset is on the way out. So hold in tight, guys. I know we live in a crazy world that's depressing, but I promise you we're winning and things are going to change. So that's what I have for you guys today, but tell me in the comments down below, what do you guys think about the left wanting to merge into one party to defeat Pierre Polyev? Are you guys surprised? Did you see this coming? Because I know I did. Also, tell me who won that debate between Kian Bexty and the self-proclaimed media pro in that radio interview. I want some feedback. Also, the Jordan Peterson clip. Do you guys agree with Jordan Peterson? Is this worse than what happened during the concentration camps? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to support this channel, like the video, drop a comment, share with your friends, tell your friends about the pleb, or you could buy a membership for five Canadian dollars. Our money is worthless, so it's basically a great deal. My name is the pleb, double P, Hit us with the outro. Hey, go ahead. Hey, hey, keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You hear that? Keep up the great work. Keep up the great keep work. The great Let's work. bring it home. Let's yeah. bring it home. The pleb. The pleb. Oh. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Peace.